Another thing we can do is create groups and groups of connections that we can send messages to. So what I'm going to do is create a new method called join group. And this is going to be called again from our JavaScript client. And what this is going to do is add our connection, the incoming connection that wants to join the group to a specific group that we're just by key. And that's going to be our string group there. So what we can do is if we call groups.add to group async, we can pass in our connection ID and then some string that represents the name of our group. It's just the key. What I'm also going to do now is we're going to add a new method called send message to group. And we're going to take the same idea here. We're going to take the group name and then the message we want to send to that group. So this is just going to look typical. So we can call return clients dot group. And then we can pass in this method. We can pass in the group name. And then we can call send async. And we're going to call receive message and then pass the message as well. All right, so let's jump over to the HTML and we're going to do two things here. Let's first create a button that we're going to use to join a new group. So let's just create that button. We'll call this join group. And we'll create a value label called join private group. And then the next thing we're going to do is let's add a new option to our select list. For so we can specify that we only want to send a message to this new private group. So we'll create an option called private group. There we go. So to wire this all up, let's go into the message.js file and we're going to wire up that join group button. So let's do a document dot get element by ID. And we called it join group. And we're going to add an event listener on the click. So let's create a new function for a callback. So what we're going to do is we can take the connection invoke similar idea here. And instead of send message to user, we're actually just going to be calling join group. And then there's actually only gonna be one argument, which was the group name. So we'll call that private group. And then we can call prevent default in the event. Now we're going to do one more thing, which is modify our send button. So we can actually now add in an else if where we check if the group value is now equals to private group. And if it is, then we will do very similar connection invoke, but instead of connect send message to user, We'll actually change this now to be send message to group. And we need to specify the second parameters now, the group name, which is called private group. And we'll send our message along. So let's run this now and let's take a look at how this works. So I'm going to create three tabs, three different windows, and we will see how two of the windows I'll join the group and then subsequently just one of them I won't. So we can see how the message goes to the two windows that have joined the group. So let's create a third window. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna send a message to everyone first. We can see it hits all three windows. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click join group in the first window, and I'm gonna click join group in the third window. Now, if I select our private group, and I send a new message, our secret message. Now we can see it only is going to the windows that actually have joined that group. Let's quickly recap what we covered in server hubs. We have the ability to communicate with the caller of a server hub method, handle events for when a connection is made or terminated, the ability to send messages to specific connected clients, as well as group connected clients and send messages to those groups.